Almost half a year ago, I began putting out firm NVIDIA Blackwell leaks. These included details on Blackwell's rough expected performance, which I said it was expected to be another large uplift, although not as big as Lovelace, and also when you would actually be able to get your hands on NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series. And yeah, on that note, I said numerous times that I was hearing the laptop series would be ready early 2025, and then that the desktop series would be ready before that, which to the people who say, oh, duh, anyone could have guessed that, well, those people are forgetting that at that time last year everyone else was saying that blackwell wouldn't come out until 2025 and so yeah i was going against the consensus when i said those things last year and well now if you look around though it does seem that lately everyone else is coming around to this truth that i guess i was early too although i do have to be honest and admit this well, I was told and did leak that NVIDIA was going to launch Blackwell desktop cards in 2024. It was, generally speaking, my opinion and the opinion of many of my sources that NVIDIA would be unlikely to launch anything but the 5090 and maybe 5080. And if they did launch even one of those, it would be at the very, very, very end of 2024. And the reasons are pretty obvious. If AMD isn't competing in the ultra high end this year, and what is the point in NVIDIA launching more than the very top cards? There just really wouldn't be a point where you can still try to sell off the rest of Lovelace and still get rid of actually a lot of Ampere stock that is still out there. And so when I saw rumblings online recently that not just the 5090, but supposedly, according to some people, also the 5080 might be launching this year and maybe not at like Christmas time, maybe a bit before that, I could believe it, but I was a little bit surprised. And yet, then, one of my best sources that was instrumental in just about every Lovelace and Blackwell leak that you've seen from this year tipped me off this week that they were hearing pretty much the same thing that other people have been saying. And in fact, they even thought, if you look at this quote on screen here, that there is a slim chance that NVIDIA might launch both the 5090 and 5080 in quarter three, although I want to be clear that this person thinks that is a slim remote chance that it is probably going to be quarter four. And then I reached out to another one of my longest running NVIDIA sources, and this person said the same thing. Although this person did emphasize that they thought it wasn't really something having to do with GPU sales or gaming competition. And interestingly, an OEM source of mine said that they actually weren't seeing any acceleration to the overall lineup and that, if anything, they are now expecting their Blackwell laptops to not have good availability until late quarter one or maybe even quarter two. And that, well, yeah, maybe other OEMs have heard differently. According to this person, they see no evidence that at least the die configs that will be used in mobility are being pulled up at all versus what this person told me last year. And this was one of the people that was essential to some of those early Blackwell leaks. And so after getting that last quote, I sat down and just thought about it. I was like, well, okay, generally speaking, everything lines up still between this handful of sources I've reached out to, but one could argue the OEM source has information that's somewhat conflicting with the other sources. But those other sources are some of my best ones, so I don't think they're wrong on this, and other people online are saying similar things. And then, well, I put two and two together and just thought about this. Just because NVIDIA claims something is launched doesn't mean that it really is or that you can buy it in any significant numbers. But that if NVIDIA is going to launch AI or professional variants of Blackwell that use the same dyes as the gaming variants, well then you might as well paper launch the gaming variants even if you can't even really buy them, right? And I proposed this theory to one of my contacts at NVIDIA, who doesn't always, but this time did, reach back out to me and confirmed, putting this quote on screen, that look... When we, we being NVIDIA, announce Blackwell editions of RTX 6000 and B40 type products, everyone's basically going to know the specs of what our gaming variants will be because, well, they use the same dyes. And thus, we can't drag our feet on launching GB202 and GB203 because we need those out as soon as possible to keep momentum going against AMD's MI products that at a minimum offer a ton of RAM for cheap and could pose a threat to us if they ever sort out their production bottlenecks like the MI300X. However, do you note that just because something is launched does not mean it will be easy for you to buy in any serious numbers. And so there you go. Because NVIDIA thinks MI300X could become a bigger threat and other MI products could become even larger threats later this year, that it would make sense to get out Blackwell professional cards as soon as possible. If you're going to get those out, 
Might as well at least paper launch the gaming variants. They use the same die. Just have those ready to go. And you can always increase volume on them whenever you want to, although they probably won't right away. And I actually want to now expand on why MI products are seen as a threat to NVIDIA right now, despite Blackwell having some eye-watering specs, and why this might mean they could be looking at an Ampere style launch, unfortunately, for NVIDIA Blackwell. And I also want to talk about the MI350X a bit. But first, my dog Jesse is occasionally very helpful, especially when it comes to policing my girlfriend's cat. But if I'm being entirely honest, she spends most of the day doing absolutely nothing that helps anybody. And that's really the same as your PC. Yeah, you might love using it to play games or render or model things, but all of that horsepower, most of the time, it's probably not being used to do anything, much like my pets. And well, that can change today if you just use the Salad app. This piece of content is brought to you by the Salad app, which is a free PC app that puts your computer's passive power or your home's bandwidth to work earning rewards like Discord Nitro, PayPal gift cards, Visa prepaid debit cards, and games and more. That's right, whether you have untapped bandwidth at your house via an internet connection that doesn't always need to be utilized 100% to stream Netflix, or you have a PC that ideally has an RTX 3060 or better, you can get rewarded for simply sharing your computing power or your bandwidth with the rest of the world while you're not using it. So when you're not using your PC or your internet connection to game or stream Netflix, start up the salad app, become a salad chef, and cook up some rewards, and also cook up some support for this channel. Seriously, it's entirely free to click that link in the description and download the app. And if you do so, you can just use your gaming PC to earn rewards while you're not gaming, or your modeling, rendering PC. Any powerful hardware you have, including its internet connection, can be made much more useful. And again, if you go and click on that link in the description and download Salad, it helps this channel so much. So support yourself earning some rewards on the side and support this channel by downloading the Salad app through the link in the description today. All right, so before the ad break, I made it clear that my sources are telling me that indeed, not just the 5090, but the 5080 might be launching this year, and that NVIDIA is probably going to announce it sooner than a lot of people were expecting. In fact, I've actually heard that they really probably will announce these cards at Computex with some big unveiling. However, that does not mean that you will easily be able to get them even if they launch, it could be a paper launch, very similar to what they did with Ampere. And in fact, that Ampere shenanigans that this channel covered extensively, that was before the AI boom went into hyperdrive. So if they were willing to do it back then, I bet they're really willing to do it now. But you know, even if there is decent availability at first with the 5080 and the 5090, I want to make it clear right now why I'm not really sure that this will help the pricing of the graphics cards most PC gamers actually can afford in the mid-range. So, like, let's assume that the 5080, which I think some people see in that launch this year, they go, oh my god, that might push some prices down. Right, but it's the 5080. It's not the 5070. And I am, well, it's too early for me to double down on the exact specs that I believe the 5080 and 5090 will have and the exact performance, but I have a pretty good idea. And I expect the 5080 to likely be a 16 gigabyte card that is 25 to 50% faster than the 4080 Super, which means at least roughly in the ballpark of the 4090. So think about what I'm suggesting here. If NVIDIA launches a card for $1,200 that is in the, even in the ballpark kind of of the 49 in performance, but actually has 8 gigabytes less RAM, I don't really see how that moves the needle in price performance all that much. You know, uh, yes, it is better price performance than the 4090, but it is a card that is 25 to 50% faster than the 4080 Super for 20% more money with the same amount of RAM. It moves the needle there, but only there above $1,000, and not that much. And then, you know, when it comes to what they would do with the 4090, let's remember that since late last year, the 4090 hasn't even really been able to be bought in decent numbers or close to MSRP. And even to this day, it's having trouble sitting at MSRP, meaning that I think NVIDIA hasn't been supplying a lot of 4090s to gamers already. And once they announce the 5090, or at least when they launch it, they might be very happy to just continue the 4090 and then keep selling 8102 to non-gaming customers, which I don't want to get into this too much because I don't want to get in trouble with what I might be suggesting, but I still hear that NVIDIA is getting a lot of uh, Lovelace cards into China, so I don't think that's going to be any problem for them to stop production of Lovelace, start production of Blackwell, have the 4090 go out of stock, and then boom, they have a 5090 that, yes, 
even at two thousand dollars will be better price performance than the 4090 but again whatever how much better price performance would it really be like 30 percent, 40 percent better and if it's two grand or even seventeen hundred dollars that's not going to make any mid-range cards get cheaper just like i don't think the 5080 at 1200 where it would be would probably make any of the other cards below that get that much cheaper anyways and so yeah unless the ai bubble bursts this year which i mean look it could although i don't expect it to happen that soon but it could and if it does nvidia will be happy they already have a couple of blackwell gaming cards on the market that they can shift supply to but unless the ai bubble bursts this year i think that even if nvidia is launching more than the 5090 namely the 5080 even if nvidia says it is coming out sooner than what a lot of people were expecting i still don't think this is going to be like a big material change to the pc gaming market right now not this early probably not until mid next year i think that they are doing this to have a big mind share win that they won't supply a lot of volume to them that they will be priced high enough that they won't really affect the cards in the price ranges most people can afford and that this is really just about announcing gaming variants at the same time that they get ready to sell a ton of the non-gaming AI versions of GB202 and GB203 because NVIDIA is becoming a bit worried about MI300X. And now I actually want to talk about that because I am hearing some interesting things about the MI300X and actually, yeah, soon possibly the MI350X as well. Which on that note, let me just put this quote on screen here. So this person said, by the way, I noticed in some recent podcasts, you've suggested that some of your sources suspect that MI350X is canceled. I don't think it is. In a recent meeting, it was brought up, and it was specifically mentioned as being on 4 nanometer with upgraded HBM over the MI300X. Maybe there was some consideration on canceling MI350X due to how powerful Blackwell is, but I would suggest that if it's not canceled, it's because they realized NVIDIA Blackwell isn't better in one key metric. VRAM, VRAM, and cost is all some AI companies care about. And then I reached out to another source about this because... If you've been listening to recent Broken Silicons, I've been saying, you know, I don't know, from what I'm hearing, MI300X has taken forever to come out. They aren't shipping that many of them. I wouldn't call it a failure like people want it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be able to hold up much longer if they can't ramp it faster next to Blackwell. And that's before we even talk about Vera Rubin, which I have leaked is coming out much sooner than what a lot of people are expecting. Well, you see, I reached out to another source and this person said, I can't confirm the next-gen stuff personally, but I can say that we, this person's distributor, are being told that more MI300 products are coming in the second half of 2024, that AMD expects the HBM capacity on these products to make them desirable, which I can tell you it's true. Every MI300X made is instantly selling, and the number one reason given is that it already has 192 gigabytes of HBM 3E before Blackwell even launches. However... I do need to be clear that AMD isn't making remotely enough to keep up with demand, and at least right now, I doubt they are taking significant AI market share from NVIDIA yet. And so, you see what's going on here? I've been hearing, like, AMD isn't making enough MI300X, and I hear Vera Rubin's coming out sooner than expected, and Blackwell has better specs, but... What I'm also hearing now, which I think is very interesting, is that NVIDIA is going to make dang sure they have GB202 and 203 products out this year to be able to compete with any of like the PCIe variants of some of these MI cards, and that that's because they think AMD might be able to ramp much higher capacity, and even Blackwell, and of course Vera Rubin has better specs, whatever, AMD has the VRAM capacity that people want, and they are selling MI300X for way less than Hopper, and NVIDIA is worried about that. That is why they are pushing up some Blackwell launches. It's not because you'll actually be able to buy it. It's because they think AMD is going to be ramping more and more products that could be a problem for them. And so there you go. In summary, it does sound like RTX 5090 and 5080 are launching not just this year, but maybe even before December or November, like firmly this year, and yeah, they will be strong, but I don't think NVIDIA is going to ship high levels of volume of them, at least not after the first week. Who knows? Maybe they do like one big launch week so they can get good press before they stop shipping them to gamers. But that's kind of what they did with the 4090 too. Uh, but 
I think it's mostly going to go to AI. And in the meantime, AMD is going to be ramping up MI300X and almost certainly MI350X production as much as they can to capitalize on their HBM capacity and lower cost wins that they have against NVIDIA this year. And yes, that does come at the expense of launching super high-end gaming stuff from Radeon. That is why top RDNA 4 and chiplets was canceled. But you know, even if that's happening so that they can compete with Blackwell with MI300 and MI350X this year... RDNA 4 does sound potentially like a really big deal to PC gamers. And I guess I don't want to make this video 40 minutes long, so I'm not going to say that much about RDNA 4 yet. But I will say this. A lot of recent leaks that I've seen show up in the past couple of weeks about RDNA 4 specs line up almost entirely with what I leaked about Navi 48 months ago. And I reached out to some sources, and I am told that a lot of the recent speculation is getting dang close to be very very close to what the actual full specs of navi 48 are although i don't think all of it is exactly correct just yet but people are getting close outside of moore's law is dead and in fact the only thing that stands out as odd to me that i'm seeing people speculate about online is the die size for rdna4 but either way i think amd is going to have a surprisingly good price performance winner in rdna4 but how soon and exactly what the specs will be you're just going to have to wait to hear that in the next video. That is going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you like it, comment below for the algorithm, share it, and subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. That helps so much with the algorithm as we continue to grow. It, it really helps us a ton. Ring the bell button too so you actually see all those upcoming RDNA 4 videos. And also you see the upcoming podcast with Asianometry. And remember... If you support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon, even at the lowest tier, you're able to ask guest questions like Asianometry. He is somebody who is really a big person who covers Silicon news and history in Taiwan, and he was in Taiwan during the earthquake. So it should be a very interesting discussion if you want to submit questions for him. In the next few hours, the request for those questions should be up. But otherwise, you know what? No matter what, you made it this far in the video. Thank you for watching.